Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a closer look at the concept of a normal stress. A normal stress is something we think about when the force applied is normal or perpendicular to the surface. Now the, the force can be a, a tensile force resulting in a tensile stress where you're pulling up on the object. In case of a cable, it's more common. Or it can be a compressive stress where you're pushing down on a beam or you're pushing down on a bar, compressing it. Again, the force applied will be perpendicular to the cross-section area of the surface. Now, if we make a random cross-section cut and we take a look inside that object and we look at the cross-sectional surface, we can take a small area element and call it dA. And notice that that is dA is in the xy plane, the way this is oriented. And let's say that there's inside that there's a tensile stress. But in other words, there's, being, there's a force pulling up in one direction, a force pulling down on the other direction, pulling on that object, and so therefore creating a tensile stress. Then how do we define that normal stress? And the normal stress for that small little area element is defined as the ratio of the force applied to that small area element divided by that small area element. But what if we want to know the normal stress at some point in the cross-section? Well, what we can do then is we can shrink down that area. The ratio will presumably be the same. And as we then take the limit as the area, the cross-sectional area in consideration shrinks down to zero, that ratio will then result in what we call the normal stress. And we use the sigma symbol to indicate that normal stress. And the sub z indicates that's in the z direction, perpendicular to the xy plane. So that means that we can then pick any point along that cross-section and calculate the normal stress. Now, if the material is uniform in consistency, in makeup, and it's uniform in strength throughout, then we can say that that normal stress will be a constant anywhere inside the material, but it could also change depending upon position, depending upon the composition of the material. But we'll get into that later. Also, what we'll see later is that by sometimes compressing or by uh, applying a tensile stress to material, you can actually change the cross-sectional area. By pulling on a cable, you can actually make the cable thinner. By pushing down on a beam, you can actually make the beam wider. And so we'll look at those kind of changes as well. But in this point, in this case, we're just simply looking at the, the changes along the length of the material caused by a normal stress. And I think I have one too many L's in there. So let me get rid of that extra L. So again, we have compressive stress. When the force is pointed towards the material, we have tensile stress. When the forces are pulling away from the material, and so that causes those internal forces to exist. Again, notice we can then take the limit at any point inside the material and then define the normal stress as the stress at that particular point inside the material. And that is how it's defined.